Have you ever wondered, how do authors do it? How do they keep their audiences engaged? Oh hi, welcome to the unveiling and untangling of Donkerweb with me, Mr. B. Today we are going to look at characters and character development. So get your pens and paper together, ready or together, and let's make some notes as we go along. Remember, you can follow and share this uh, channel and video so that other students like yourself can also benefit from this session, these sessions. We will also uh, look, take a deeper in-depth look into other themes and motives in the book in other episodes. So to be sure to click the like and the follow button. So we will go through a few of the characters that are important and we are going to have a look at who they are and how they slot in together. I'm going to make use of the um, symbol or uh, motive of a web that, uh, that they keep on using throughout the book. Even in the title, they, the title call, being called Donker Web, um, Sin Spiel, it plays on the idea that everyone's entangled in this mess of a situation. So on the screen here, we find an image of a web. So what I will hear you must do is, look for me in this Kolikie, and die swart kolikie, en star vir my na die kolikie, en the longer you stare at that little black spot in the middle of the web, the more the web becomes um, warped, and the, and the lines become almost moving in a way. If you stare long enough, some of the lines will even disappear, and I want you to use that visualization when you study for your donker web. Even if you stare long enough, you'll see that the spider web looks like it's coming past you, and that you are falling into this dark, swart gut that which is also part of the motives in Donkerweb. This book is amazing when it comes to motives and symbolisms. And even just that alone can create a whole story. So the first character that we get, we get introduced to is the baker. The baker. Baker in Afrikaans is a bakker. It is very close to the Afrikaans word, so nothing to worry about there. And the bakker um, is basis uh, the, the main uh, storyline, what everything that the whole story is about. Everyone, or not everyone, the one main uh, whiff character, Greg, is looking for the baker. Everyone eventually is helping uh, uh, Greg to look for the baker, om die baker te vind. So let's have a look how the baker has influenced, or, or how the baker's web has spread out into the into the universe and into the surrounding area of who the baker is and how what influences the baker has had. We know that the baker, obviously at the end of the book we find this out, that the baker had a brother or a cousin rather that uh, that was taken in by his family. And that guy's name was Rian Trollip. Now Rian Trollip is a doctor and his wife um, was someone who actually helped uh, Greg, the main character, to, to find a clue as to who to look for eventually to find the baker. Um, so Rian Trollip was a doctor. He was framed by his brother, the baker, to kind of probably, um, because he wanted to let them um, uh, off, the, off, the, off the trail of, of the police, off the trail from, from what the baker um, and his travante was doing. Um, but he then obviously got cold feet and he wanted to get out and the baker then framed him by putting child pornography files on his laptop. And that then eventually um, came out and Rian Trollip, Dr. Rian Trollip then committed suicide suicide because he couldn't stand the fact that people will think that which is not true anyway that he would do such horrendous things so the baker had a brother and this immediately also tells us a little bit of the characterization of the baker that he would frame his own blood family into such a bad thing the next thing that we know is that valkyrie which is closely connected to the rian troller because his wife she's she sent the book to to greg in the stalin boss the flat flatlets where he stayed and um, Valkyrie appeared in that burnt book that was sent to him and Valkyrie turned out to be the baker's 
wife. So later on at the end of the book when they arrive in Venetia and they find the address of the baker in that moment um, he sees these two people on, on the balcony um, of, uh, of one or other house there in Venetia in, in Venice and, and, and eventually we find out that that is the baker and his wife which is called or referred to as Valkyrie. Valkyrie are those uh, women in the, um, in the Nuersa culture who decided who had to decide who's supposed to live and who must die. So there's a little link for you as well, because she obviously has a very close decision-making character in, in, in the storyline, where she probably decides who must die, who mustn't die, and that's why they call her Valkyrie. Connected to the baker, obviously, is the candlestick maker, which we then find out later is Greg's dad. We also know about the butcher, and that is the trio that comes from the previous book of the Project Nursery Rhyme, the baker, the candlestick maker, the butcher, and they were involved in all these um, horrendous crimes, which we not go into into Donkerweb. That is kind of of the previous book part of it, but basically what it comes down to is that they had a trio of criminals here, and and the butcher and the baker, or the butcher and the candlestick maker, ended up in jail. So let's use their real names now. The butcher, Doc Pinar, who used to be the principal of Lawson College, and the candlestick maker, who used to be, or who is Greg's father. All right. Furthermore, those three criminals had an influence or had a connection with the judge, Rechter Gereke. Now, Rechter Gereke was murdered, viciously and brutally murdered and executed, actually, by these or somehow by these three people, these three, the butcher, the candlestick maker and the, and the baker. However, the candlestick maker, we believe, wasn't present at the murder, but obviously he's got blood on his hands because he was part of the whole thing. But the Doc Pinar, the butcher and the baker, as we know, is evil. Uh, they were, they were the present in the, yeah, at the murder. And we know about this because of a video that was sent to his son, Zander. Zander Gereke is was 10 years old or 11 years old rather when his father was murdered by these two gentlemen plus someone else that was present other than the candlestick maker. Zander made friends. So Zander now comes into the story in the past and he makes friends at high school with a guy called Greg Owen. Greg Owen's dad is the candlestick maker. Ne? So now we have these two connections here. So you can see the web that eight spray eight no Zander and no Greg. Our two main kind of characters. We've got Zander as the, uh, Greg as the protagonist and Zander as the tritagonist for interest sake. So um, uh, so that's how that connects so, uh, for, for us. So furthermore, in school, at school, at Lawson College, Zander had a friend called Tom who helped him with the revenge, the socio-engineering uh, uh, attack on Greg's family. So remember, Zander has a, um, a motive as an, a, a reason why he wanted to have revenge because when Zander was 11 years old his dad got murdered and he was murdered by the trio or, or by the by the baker and the butcher and um, and that is why Zander has now this um, urge to have revenge. So, uh, Greg, on the other hand, has a best friend called Plunk, which is pictured as a type of jock or a uh, like a cool guy and um, obviously also abusing a little bit of drugs when he's out of school in um, or even in school. I think he was still he's already used some some weed or whatever the case may be. And um, we also know about Zander, uh, Greg's ex-girlfriend Nicole who later in the chapter or early chapters we read that she uh, fell pregnant after school and this also um, links us to a theme of choices but more about that in the other videos we further in the down line and down the storyline we meet the a lady a girl called Isla now Isla is Zander's girlfriend and they lived in Istanbul or they were in Istanbul when by the time we met them 
Isla has got a very good influence on Xander, obviously, and keeps him kind of level-headed. We also have met Lisa, who is Plunk's girlfriend. But the connection that is important there that we need to know is Lisa's father, Wim Dirk Skitter. Now, Wim Dirk is an ex-policeman, or he was in the police force, and he has now retired, and he... Um, approaches Greg to say, you stay away from my daughter. And um, he says to uh, Lisa, you don't mix with these guys because he associates Plunk with uh, Greg. So later on, obviously, they make amends and, and Greg actually goes to Wim Dirk for advice. That guy I put there as a representative of the other principal, the, the current principal of Lawson College, Thomas Lawson, who um, uh, uh, has a connection with all these people in the middle, because when Greg went to the, the dinner party, <clears throat> he actually um, met the baker there. At that stage, we didn't know what his name, well, we didn't know he was the baker, but we knew him as, what was his name again? Sebastian Stadler. Okay, so we know about Sebastian Stadler. So that, and then the, at the top, there's little Chloe Adams that I put put in there just to remember. She's kind of like a light little uh, character that just is there for the comic relief a little and in support, obviously, and positive support of, of Greg and probably a little bit in love with him. I don't know. We, don't, we, we won't know. And then don't forget Zand, uh, Greg's mother, uh, uh, Rina Owen, who's had had an affair with... Andre Symington, who was at a stage also a suspect to be the baker. So you can see in the corner there, let me just get my little red button, in the corner there, the right hand corner there, we've got all those characters clocked together in the web because the, the baker cleverly has orchestrated this, as we know. So he's got, he obviously was the reason why the butcher and the candlestick maker, aka um, Chris Owen and uh, Doc Pinar got, went to jail. Somehow, the the um, uh, the baker managed to frame his brother or to pull attention away from from him to go to jail. The police throw the police off the, his trail because he framed his brother or his 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 cousin who was like a brother to him by putting the illegal files on his laptop, on his folder. And you can see the connection there with all of them in the middle. Valkyrie, as well as the butcher, as well as the candlestick maker, has an inf had an influence on the death of Rechter Gierke, who was the father of Zander. Zander is the, the, the character in the book that wants to have revenge on the Owen family or had revenge on the Owen family and um, successfully so. They've, the Owen family completely spat uh, uh, and John, the brother, uh, committed suicide. The mom is having an affair with Andre Symington. The dad is in jail and it leaves the with character, Greg Owen, with these donker gedagtes, donker tye. Donker is also a theme that we'll be discussing in the book, uh, throughout the book as well. But it leaves Greg with questions and also anger and confusion. And he wants to find the baker. So rewind everything. And what is it all about? It's all about Greg Owen looking for the baker, but the baker is slimmer as wat hulle gedink het. Die baker is nie onder een kalkoen uitgebroei, natuurlijk nie. Hy speel nie speeliekies nie. Hy weet precies wat aangaan, en hier die um, uh, Zander ookie, wat die kieberkraker is, waarmee hy beste vriende geraak het met, met, met Greg Owen, hy het geweet hoe om die twee ookies um, uit te vang. En aan die einde van die boek um, uh, uh, sien ons hoe Plank die offer moet wees vir hierdie gemors, hierdie web waarin hulle hulle self bevind. So Afrikaans gauw vinnacht, so dat jy kan verstaan en die woorde neerskryf, woorde skat, karakters, karakters is belangrijk wat jy nou moet kyk vir my, die karakter connections, en ons gaan nou bykie verder gesels oor die ontwikkeling van die karakters, maar karakters, die karakterse verbindenisse met mekaar, en hoe allemaal inpas, 
bij elkaar. Zo so karakters, verbindenissen of verbindings, um, karakterontwikkeling, karaktergroei. Um, en natuurlijk krijg je mensen een conflict onder die karakters. Innerlijke conflict, uiterlijke conflict, wat ons ook meer zou naar kijk. Als ons nou bykie meer naar karakterontwikkeling en karakterisering kyk, sal, sal ek voorstel, I'll suggest that you ask yourself vijf vraag wanneer het kom by karakterontwikkeling. Vraag jouself af, hoe praat hulle? How do they speak? How do they talk? Wat sê hulle? What is their dialogue? Hoe, wat sê hulle vir mekaar? Wat doen hulle? What are they doing? What are their actions? Wat verteenwoordig hulle? What do they represent as an archetype? En hoe verander hulle? How, how do they change throughout the storyline? So, a technique that I would suggest here is to ask those five questions when you do do character development. Now, the first example I've got here for us is Greg as die wif karakter. Greg ervaar innerlijke conflict. Nee? So uh, if you look at the question, how does he speak and what does he, what do they say and what, what so how does he talk, what is his lingo and how, what does he say. So we know that Greg has a lot of inner like a conflict because we can hear his thoughts. Why? Because the, uh, the, 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 the book is written in the first person uh, storyteller version. So it's ek, dink, ek, sien, ek, ek, ek. First person storyteller. So we have an insight into the main character's mind. So in a like a conflict, self twyfel He's got a lot of self twyfel If you think of how he reacts as well and how he prete- uh, how he doubts himself the whole time, he's very dear makar. He's by dear makar. He's no hal stubborn. He's hard kopig. Hy het baie skuldgevoelens. Greg voel skuldig oor sy pa wat in die tronk sit. Greg voel skuldig omdat aan die einde om het plank sterf. Greg voel skuldig oor baie dinge en dit dra by tot sy aanhoudende vrees uh, vir veiligheid, vir uh, sy aanhoudende uh, paranoia en sovoorts. Greg soek ontsnapping. He wants to escape. And how, what does he do? Hy gebruik Ritalin to kind of cope with all these things in his head. Hy is nogal bang, I think. He can come across as a bit scared. Eventually later on, when he realizes, ooh, Tom has now passed away, and he's the last one who saw Tom, so is he not the guilty one? Are they not going to think he's the guilty one? So dan gaan hy na, oom Dirk toe, as a father figure, to speak and to ask for help. Also later on in the book, when they are in Venice, wanneer hulle in Venetia is, dan praat hy met Ayla en sê die biker het gewen, ek wil nie meer aangaan nie, kom ons los het net. He's a bit scared, he wants to take back, he wants to go back. Maar hy kan ook vastbesloot te wees, also a, 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 that goes with the hardkoppigheid. If someone says to, me, do, him, to him, don't do it, he will go and do it. A voorbeeld nummer 2 van Zander, wat ons tritagonis is, um, hy ervaar baie uiterlijke conflict. So, wat doen Zander? Wat visies doen Zander? Zander neem wraak, which is one of the themes of the, of the, of the uh, novel as well. Nee. So, Zander sy uiterlijke conflict geef vir ons inzicht oor hoe hy is. Nee. Ok, so Zander ervaar, ons sien Zander wat uiterlijke conflict uitoefen. Met ander woorde, hy, um, hy neem vraag op die ouwe gesin, hy, um, hy beklei, hy, hy is verbaal oor hoe hy voel, hy vertrou niemand nie, maar hy sê dit ook, nee. Um, hy is baie technologisch slim. So, there is another sub-theme that's running through this book for me, and it's also addiction. Um, adults, in general, and possibly a lot of teenagers, struggle with addiction. Addictions can be anything from 
drugs or whatever, but also it can also be something like being on your cell phone too much or being overthinking too much or uh, the urge to uh, to blame someone. It can be many things. It doesn't have to be something physically that you take in your mouth that can be addicted, addictive. It can be anything. And in, 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 in Zander's situation, he is addictive. He is verslaaf aan, um, aan hierdie technologische goed en hierdie kieberkrakerij, etc. Zander het trauma responses in hierdie boek, en dit is wat ek wil hee, jylle moet verstaan en, en kind of comprehend. Zander, Zander, everything Zander does is out of trauma response. Um, onthou, sy pa is voor hom eindelijk maar basis geslaan en vermoor. Nee, hy het ook nie gesien toe hy kind was, hy pa is vermoor nie, maar hy was daar toe, toe dokpie naar hulle opdaag by die huis om hom te kom vermoor. Um, ek dink um, sy, sy trauma responses het ook te doen met dat hy niemand wil vertrouw nie en dat hy wil wraak neem enig het, hy het baie triggers wat is Zanderse triggers jy moet nie vir hom sê hy jok nie, hoe hy raak kwaad jy moet nie vir hom sê, jy moet nie vir hom jok nie dan raak hy nog kwaader en ons sien dit in uiterlijke conflict situaties tussen Greg en Zander. Ok, so now let's talk about the ontwikkeling of, of these two characters before we go on. So in the beginning we see how Greg um, uh, has inner conflict and struggles with his thoughts and these memories and the questions that he has. And as we go through the through the novel, I I, I find him to 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 evolve or to grow um very much into a direction of he realizes he's making a mistake and he's maybe too deep in the end in in the deep end yeah and he's reaching out for help that can be a a a, a significant character growth pinpoint that we can make but basically if you can identify the the growth from be, being almost a greek almost being a bit innocent and ignorant rather is the word. Nee, onskuldig maar bykie um, onbewus. Um, and how he then realizes, hy besef naderhand, wacht a bykie, wacht a bykie, wok hy. Um, he realizes, wacht a bykie, nie, hieso is nou nie meer, hierdie kan ek nou nie meer doen nie. So, so Zander um, uh, 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 is for my, uh, has more character growth in terms of, or more clear gro- character growth because it's more external. And when he speaks to Zander, when he speaks to Greg at the Hagia Sophia and the, and the Versonke Palais, and he kind of says to Zander at the end where he says, you know, I'm, I'm very sorry what I did to your family. I realize now that, you know, having revenge... You have to dig two graves, and isn't that also in front of the book written? So um, make sure you kind of ask yourself those five questions. Who pratele? What do they say in the beginning, in the middle, and the end? What do they do? Beginning, middle, end. What what do they represent? Beginning, middle, and end. And how do they change? Beginning, middle, and end of the storyline. If you look at example number three, Plank is the clown, hy is die nar, hy wil net grapjes maak, en hy is die lichtie, en, and he does silly things, he plants a transponder in his hand, he smokes weed, all that, so he's, he represents the comedy of the story, and his character growth was the more, the most um, um, uh, visual for me, because and that's also a very good recipe for a story, if you think about it, because we fell in love with Blanc. We we liked, we started to like him in the end. At one stage, I thought it was he was just silly and being irritating, but then eventually he became very honest and he really missed Lisa and he really was like in love with her. And we really felt we could identify with me him. And then he he gets murdered. Or he gets killed. So throughout the process, Planck is the one that grows the most, I think. He grows, and and it's ironic, it's ironic that he's the one that that dies. He becomes a slagoffer, and um, the nagevolg um, van anderse foute and keuses, the the, 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 um, the consequence of others' choices. And remember, keuses is a baie sterk thema ook wat deerkom in the, in the story. And the last example is 
you can ask yourself, what does the character represent? And this character, Wim Dirk Skitter, Lisa's dad, represents a father figure. Because think about it. What father figure, what positive father figure role, role model did Greg have with his dad and with his mom having an affair with another guy? Um, what father figure, role model did Zander have? I think Zander's dad was quite a vicious man as well because he also said to Zander when Zander walked in on, them, on him in the study, in the prologue, remember, he had a gun and, and, and he said to Zander, it will be our little secret. Now, I've always said, if you tell a child, it's our little secret. Number one, it sends red lights all over the place. And number two, you don't do that because it creates an insecurity in the child. So 11 years old, Zander sees his dad hiding a pistol quickly and he says, don't tell anyone, it's our secret. There's a knock on the door. The, the dog Pinar comes in. He sees the shadow of him being punched. And later on in his early 20s or late teens, 19, 20 years old, he, he gets a video of his dad being executed brutally. So um, it's very interesting to see how these characters grow. But remember, character ontwikkeling, characterisering and character ontwikkeling, it's not wendig. It's not necessarily... Um, from good to from bad to good, or from 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 uh, crazy to not crazy. Sometimes it's just like they realize oh, they made a mistake, or they 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 they, they realize they were part of a, a bigger thing that they that they anticipated. Now, so um, Dirk being the father figure is very important. Also, a very good um, uh, replication or a very good uh, example of what the characters can represent, okay? Protagonist, tritagonist, clown, or the, or the funny bunny, uh, the father figure, the role model, you know, okay. Have certain questions you can think about, and remember, there are more questions and more exam-based activities based on characters on the DT International content which you can subscribe to and um, so all you have to do is to click on the link below and purchase your subscription and you can access more detailed questions that are aimed for your exams for Donkerweb, the Erfani Viljoen. So some of the questions that I suggest you can actually look at here is wie is Zander? It's good to know who he really is. Wat er type rol speel Plank in die roman? What role does Plank play in the, in the novel? Hoekom denk jy is Greg bereid om die biker te vind ten spuite van die nagevolge? What is the reason behind the character that is Greg? To go and put everyone's lives on in in on on day in danger. Why does he do that? Who come say bereit om dit te doen? So click on the link below if you want some more exam type questions and memos and practices for vocabulary, uh, etc. And um, otherwise, subscribe to my channel, uh, Donny Teach DT International Academy, for more videos like this. If you liked what you see, and um, the next video that we are going to look at is. The second technique, which is called Fur Eitzichte, how the writer puts things in place for us to Fur Eitzicht, to see Fur Eit of what is going to happen. I am now going to pull out a wild card. I've got a few, you can see, you can do this technique at home as well. I've got a few post-its, post, post-its, post-its here that um, I wrote, kind of pinpointed some things out of the novel, out of the book, Donkerweb, and now I'm going to shuffle them. I won't look, and I'm going to pull out a any, I'm not going to look and I'm going to pull a random piece of post-it out, a post-it out, and I'm going to see what it says. And then from there, I'm going to see if I can connect a character or a character development to that. So let's see. Drum roll, please. Let's see. Okay, I pulled geheime. I pulled geheime. Look at my beautiful handwriting. Geheime and um, people who holds secrets. Uh, Greg Sama, because she's having an affair, she's held a secret from him. So you can imagine the 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 confu That's also why Greg is so confused with life, because the people have just either not told him the truth or lied to him, or they kept things from him. Um, 
Greg Sapa, obviously because he was part of Project Nursery Rhyme, and Greg Sapa in die tronk is nogal moeilik met hom. Ek kan nie dink Greg Sapa is a nice ownie. Um, and also not a good role model anyway. I mean, not that I'm judging anyone who's in jail, because you never know, people can be innocent. But in this storyline, I don't think Greg's dad is so innocent. Tom, Tom that was murdered, he was quite geheimsinnig, so geheime can also connect to characters, and, char and geheime is also a theme, one of the sub-themes or the themes of the, of the novel. And natuurlijk Zander, Zander keeps things from Greg throughout the high school career while they were friends to, 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 um, to, uh, to, complete the social in socio engineering attack on his family and um and also kind of don't tell greg the whole story we, even when he goes to um you know to 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 istanbul he he wants him to do weird things it's very secretive the whole time he's the password yeah and a, and a wachtwoord da so i must say geheime plays a very important role in the story as well and you can connect that to characters what other geheime does other characters withhold from themselves or from others do you know Please share with us in the comments down below. Until next time, goodbye from me, Mr. B.